Join Advent so far? I am. I love Advent. And I, I really do. Um, every single week, we're going to focus on a different theme. Um, last week was on, on hope, and this week we're going to talk about love. Now, the thing that's interesting is that we could actually take love anywhere. I mean, all of Christmas, all of love, all of, all of Christmas time and all of Advent is really about love, the, the, the love of God, and it's expressed in Jesus Christ. So today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of verses, give us a couple of lessons. By the way, it's on the back of your uh, bulletin is the scriptures we have for today. Uh, but, but I wanted to focus on a little bit, and I thought, what better way than to be able to take a look at one of the verses that we all know so well, and that is John 3.16. Now, taking one verse, sometimes we can take it out of context. So I've got John 3.16, 3.17, and 3.18, because that the idea is, let's find a way to be able to talk about not only love, but the love of God. The love of God. So we're going to talk about the love of God in those three verses, John 3.16, 3.17, and 3.18, and we'll just see what the Lord has to say to us in these three verses. So 3.16 starts off and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then verse 18 says, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. You know, as I mentioned before, this is the second week of Advent, and we pick a theme. You know, different churches have different themes, but love is one of the ones that is typically found either on the second week of Advent or the fourth week of Advent. It's one of the common themes, and it should be, because love is throughout the Bible. God so loved the world that he gave us his son. You know, John 3.16 is one of those things that everybody knows John 3.16, right? I mean, just, you just know it. Uh, for those of you that, that like football, you, sometimes you see at the, in the end zone, you know, position just so the camera will be able to get them. They unfold this huge John 3.16 sign, right? Or the word on the caps. John 3.16 is just, just a verse that we know. Um, it, it's, 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 it's celebrated around the world, John 3.16. I actually have an interesting story, true story. All my stories are true. You like stories? You like stories, right? All the stories are true. So going back, this is going back almost 30 years, my wife and I had a Christian bookstore. Remember the local Christian bookstore? Uh, we, we had one. It was a beautiful little store. Um, it actually got to be one of the bigger stores in Detroit, but, but we had one of those little spinners that had jewelry in it. And, and Carol wanted to upgrade the jewelry, have little crosses and little things and bracelets and rings and, and different things. And we met a jeweler named Bob Seaman. And Bob Seaman was a Christian jeweler. He was out in California. And we got to, to meet him, and he told us a story. And the story was about John 3.16. So what he did is he wanted to, he talked to one of his, his top jewelers, okay, one of his top jewelers, um, who was a guy from um, Albania and uh, was a Muslim, but was, was an amazing jeweler, amazing jeweler. And he asked him if he could take a, a small cross and get John 3.16 on it, all of John 3.16 on it. And the man said, oh, see, I can do that, I can do that. And, and Bob was looking for something like this, you know, be able to get all of the words on, on this cross. Well, <laughs> after about two or three weeks, the guy came back with the finished product, and, and he came back with this, okay? <laughs> But you know, here's the thing, we carried that cross. It was one of our top selling crosses. And the reason is, is because all you need to do is say John 3.16 and, and people know the words. When, when, my, when uh, my wife and I first came to the Lord, um, it was when uh, people started wearing t-shirts that had scripture verses on it and stuff like that. And, and I, I wanted something that was, was clever, something that was different. And so I, I selected something out of John 3.16 I found in the Christian bookstore. And all it said was, be a whosoever. <laughs> be a whosoever. I love it. And the King James says, whosoever believes in him. Okay? Whosoever believes in him. And that's the idea. John 3.16 is about the love of God. So one of the things we want to know about the love of God, and this is lesson number one, is that God's love is universal. God's love is universal. Now, you have to understand that John 3.16, that's in chapter 3 of John, and John 3, I think, has about 36 or 37 verses. So the 16th verse is right in the middle of it, which means there's context that, that you have to get. 
At the beginning of chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Now, he comes at night because he's a Pharisee, and the Pharisees don't like Jesus. They took a vote. They decided they didn't like Jesus. So Nicodemus has to come at night because if he comes during the day, the other Pharisees will see him. They'll make fun of him. They'll take his lunch. They'll push him down. You know, they'll, 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 they'll bully him in the, in the play yard. That's what kids do, right? So, John, so Nicodemus had to come to Jesus at night. Now, what's interesting is that Nicodemus starts talking to Jesus, and Nicodemus doesn't have it right. And Jesus says, you're, you're the teacher of the Jews. Don't you understand you have to be born again? You see, the Jewish people believed that they were the chosen people, and that it was through the law they were going to be able to be made right with God. But the Bible never said that. The Bible gave them the law, gave them the rules, gave them how to do things, but that was never going to be enough to be able to get them right with God. Jesus was the way that they were going to get right with God. And that's what Jesus was talking about. Now, the other thing that Jews mistakenly believed is they believed that they were the only ones, that God loved the Jews, but only the Jews. But Jesus came to say, no, you have to understand that God so loved the world. And that's our lesson, is that God's love is universal. So, Again, because God's love is universal, that's different from Nicodemus' perspective. God's love is not only universal, but this is refuting this popular idea that the Jewish people were the only people that, that God loved. Now, while God's love is universal, it's also particular. And I could have taken it that way, but I thought that doesn't sound as good as universal. God's love is particular, meaning that it's individual. God loves the world, but it isn't like he loves the plants and the trees and the flowers and the birds and the bees. He loves you. He loves you in particular. Jesus died on the cross to give you eternal life. It's a, it's a particular love. John 3.16 also says that he gave his begotten son. So God didn't just love the world. He loves you. You know, there's a song I remember singing in church, and I hate to sing in public, but th this song just always comes to mind when I think about how God loves us so much. It kind of goes like this. If you know the song, please join in because my voice isn't that strong. It goes, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. I'm going to take that off the video later. So, But, but, this, but this is the Father's love. This is the heart of John 3.16. God loves the world. It's a universal love. He loves you all, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of your background, regardless of your language, regardless of what part of the country you're in or what time period you're born in. He loves you, but he loves you particularly. It's a love that's expressed in the death, Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. The recipient of God's love is the individual, not the world. The world can't receive his love. You can. God loves the world and he gives us Jesus who goes to the cross to pay, the, pay a price that we couldn't possibly pay. It was a debt that he didn't owe, but he, took, he went to the cross for us. The verse continues, it says, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting his life. And that's how God demonstrated his love. It's through the love of Jesus. Now, those that believe in him don't perish. They receive forgiveness of sin and life everlasting. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? I mean, it isn't about the law. It isn't about doing all the right things. It isn't about living a sinless life. We've all sinned. But it's about understanding who Jesus is. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's go on to the next verse. John 3.17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So that's our second lesson, that God's love saves. God loves saved. That's verse 17. Now, have you ever heard the saying, you know, don't shoot the messenger. I mean, I, I did that. I mean, I, was, I had a job where I was at Ford Motor Company. I was a, a senior finance official, which meant that I found out the profits and or losses before anybody else did, including the boss, okay? So I did all the numbers and I had the supervisor. We took a look at all the numbers and I had to be the bearer sometimes of bad news, not necessarily good news, okay? So I know what it's like to shoot the messenger. Well, Jesus was also not only the savior, but he was also the messenger, 
Jesus is the one that came bringing the, the news. And John 17 explains further to verse 16 the purpose of God's love. And the purpose of God, God's love was to save, not to condemn. To save, not content, condemn. Now, most people mistakenly believe that somehow if they get too close to Christians or if they crack the seal of their Bible or they find out a little bit about Christianity that it condemns them. Nope, nope, nope. They're already condemned. You see, that's the thing. I remember, uh, again, when I was with Ford Motor Company, I was flying a lot, and I, I took a flight, was taking a flight to New York, and I typically brought my Bible with me. It's the same Bible I have now, by the way, same Bible. So I had my Bible with me, and I would normally stick it in the seat pocket, and we sat down, and it was a crowded flight, and there was a guy sitting next to me, and we were all, at that time, we used to wear suits and ties. Remember those days? So we're sit I'm sitting there, and businessman next to me, I pull out, and I pick my Bible up and open up, I'm going to start reading it. I'm not talking to the guy. He gets up and leaves. Right? Why? Because he feels condemned. Often, often, the idea of religion, the idea of a savior, the idea of going to church brings condemnation. But verse 17 says, he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That's a, that's a mistaken identity. That they, it's just the opposite. Jesus didn't come to condemn, he came to save. Jesus didn't come into the world to pronounce condemnation. He was born in Bethlehem in a world that was already lost and separated from God. The love of God came not to just teach us about life or morality or you know, how, to, how to have a happy life. No. He came to die on a cross to pay the price that we couldn't possibly pay. Remember the angel announcing the birth of Jesus, okay? Uh, this is, heck, we might use this uh, next week for the call to worship. It's out of, out of Luke 2. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God. And saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. You see, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to, to save the world. We have that sometimes backwards. We have to understand that this is all about salvation. This is about a relationship with, with God through Jesus Christ. I want you to notice in the verse also that the love of God ex is extended to the world that the world through him might be saved. John, John, the Apostle John repeats this word three times, this word world three times, to make sure that we get it, that we understand, that it's not just the Jews, it's not just through the laws, but we're saved by grace through faith. It's not of works, not of the law. It's all through, through Jesus. Jesus didn't come to condemn, but to save. God's love saves. Let's continue with our, our third lesson in verse 18. Verse 18 says, He who believes in him is not condemned. Is that it? There you go. Thank you. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So this is the third thing we learn from this verse, and that is that God's love is expressed particularly in Jesus. If you want to know if God loves, all you need to do is take a look at Jesus. God's love is Jesus. So we also have to learn something about condemnation because it's mentioned not only in last verse, but also this verse as well. We have to understand what that's meaning when we talk about the condemnation. Jesus came to bring salvation, but those who reject that salvation, the Bible says, are already condemned. This matter of condemnation actually goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Now, Paul speaks of this in Romans chapter 5, and I could read the whole chapter for you, but you already know that. Just like the man sitting next to me on the seat, that got up as soon as I brought the Bible out and left, he understands as well. We all know that we fall short. We fall short of whatever standard we set for ourselves, whatever that is. Whatever you feel you need to do in order to honor God, we fall short. That's what Paul says in, in, in Romans 5. Paul says this, and starting in verse 12, he says, Therefore, I love the therefore. You've got to find out what the there is for is therefore. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. What's that talking about? It's talking about Adam, right? Through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, before Moses. 
Sin is not changed against anyone. Sin is not charged against anyone's account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a commandment, just as Adam did, who is the pattern of the one to come. But the gift, what's the gift? The gift is Jesus. The gift is not like the trespass, Paul says. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? You see, it's because of the love of God, which is expressed particularly in Jesus Christ, that we have this gift. And the gift, Paul says, is not like the trespass. The gift is for you. It's particular for you. The love of God in Jesus and through his perfect life, his death on the cross, the resurrection, we have what? We have redemption. We have redemption. We are no longer condemned. This verse 18 in John 3 is a difficult verse because it talks about condemnation. And we try to figure out what is that talking about condemnation? And I got to tell you, I'm not a Greek scholar at all. I took a class so I know how to find things. I took a class and I looked up the words and that, this translation is actually very, very clear. This is exactly what it says in the Greek. It says, he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So the condemnation was already there, but Jesus provided kind of like an antidote, right? Kind of an antidote. So I have an illustration. It's not mine. I've heard this before, but it's a good illustration. Imagine for a minute uh, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a town that everybody drinks out of the same well. There's a large well that everybody drinks out of that well, and somebody put poison in the well. And the, and the poison is a severe poison. I mean, every single person that drinks of that well is eventually going to die, and they die suddenly, okay? They're going to die. It's just a matter of time. They're all going to die. They've all drunk from the well. That's their condemnation. They are condemned to death. But there's an antidote, and the antidote is a free gift. Not coming from the government, okay? It's, it's a real free gift, okay? It's, it's a gift. Here's the antidote. All you need to do is take the antidote, and the antidote has a 100% effective rate. You will not die, you will not be condemned, but you will have life. All you need to do is to drink of this antidote. People that drink of the antidote, they're no longer condemned. They no longer die. They get to have life. There are certain people, however, that refuse to take the antidote. So the question is, why are they now going to die? You could say they're going to die because they don't take the antidote. But actually, they're going to die because they drank of the poison. They drank of the poison. It's the poison that killed them. The Bible says that they're already condemned. People are already condemned. Jesus came to bring us life. But it's a gift. We have to receive that gift. Now, there's an application for us, right? There's, a, there's an important application for us. And I think it's important, especially in our church. And that is, it's easy to tell somebody sometimes that you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right? You need to do that. Because if you don't, you're going to hell, right? I mean, easy to say. I'd encourage you not to say it that way. The idea is this, is that we're all sinners. All of us understand that we fall short of a standard that any God would have set. We, not, we are not consistent enough to be able to earn heaven. In fact, if we were, if it was possible to earn heaven without Jesus, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross. On the night he was betrayed, he went to the garden, right? And he prayed, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup away from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There was no other way. Jesus had to die, but that is now our gift. We need to receive that gift. So rather than telling people that unless they receive Jesus, they're going to burn in hell, why don't we tell them that we have a gift for them? And the gift is Jesus. And just like your gifts at Christmas, somebody may give you a gift, but you have to receive it, you have to open it, and you have to embrace it yourself. That's exactly what that song was about, right? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. This is the gift that we have. Now, the Bible tells us that God is love. This is what the Apostle John would later write. 1 John 4, 7, and, uh, 7, 8, and 9 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. 
we might live through him. You know, one of the things that's interesting is that as we go through these three weeks of Advent, or these four weeks of Advent, we have the opportunity to basically talk about a number of different themes. The theme of love is going to keep coming up. It's going to keep coming up because that's what Jesus is. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is Emmanuel. He's the, he's the mighty God. He's the wonderful counselor. He's God with us. But God's love is universal. God's love saves. But God's love is perfected in Jesus Christ. But it's a gift that you have to receive. And that's what Christmas is really all about, Charlie Brown. Let's pray. So Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to get together, to be able to sing these Christmas carols.